questions for Coach Scott? So Chad, start with the, the running back rotation. Uh, you guys, you know, sort of narrowed that a little bit this week. Uh, why and um, do, do you like what you got or want to see more for others or what? A little bit of both. Uh, you know, I like what we got in the room. We just got to, you know, find some guys that, you know, got, got some juice. And, uh, you know, J.J. had a great week of practice last week. He played exactly like he practiced. And uh, I mean by like, you know, we went against the uh, defense in competitive periods that we do every week. You know, the, you know, the physicality, the, the determination, the urgency he ran with on Saturday, he practiced that way. So he literally practiced exactly like he he played like he practiced. But um, also, you know, a lot of them guys try to find a rhythm, establish a rhythm, and then get going. And, you know, he got going, so kind of rode with him. Is there some things he offers with the way Garrett – um, plays the running game, QB running game that Johnson can add to that. Yeah, it's just uh, he, he he gets downhill real fast. You know, I always tell those guys the faster we can get to the line of scrimmage, it eliminates TFLs and uh, negative plays, and you know allows them guys to get beyond the line of scrimmage. You know, a lot faster, and you know, and it it, it keeps you know linebackers and safeties in particular from diagnosing run pass real fast. So it gives them an edge, and he has a really good ability to get to the line of scrimmage real fast and see it really well too. Doing some math here, and it looks like Garrett has had, I think it was 804 yards from scrimmage, mm -hmm. all purpose, the last yeah. two games. Do you have to fight the urge of not putting too much on him because you've had so much success with the things that Garrett's done? In not really, man. Let it, it's just let him play ball. I think he, he's his best when he's play ball. You know, I think that's the best thing we're doing right now, letting, letting him go out there and play ball. I always got to eliminate the, you know, it's not a lot of mistakes, uh, but it's critical mistakes, and it's at the wrong time. And so we got to eliminate those, but, you know, just let him play ball. Well, I noticed the one, the, the, the little wrinkle you guys put in with the reverse motion with the wide receiver, him as the lead blocker, and then kind of that counter play with Garrett. Are there things that you're seeing that you're coming up with that are like, hey, we can use him in this situation, or this gives us this certain look, we can do all things off of that? Is yeah. it getting to that point now? It is getting to that point because he's been such a factor with the um, obviously being able to throw the ball and being able to run the ball. So you can use his his ability to do both to you know grab the attention of defenders and you know keep him from uh, keep it honest and, and allow different lanes you know within the offense and create other opportunities for guys. And you guys have not done well offensively coming out of the gate, yeah. the first quarter and third quarter at the locker room. Uh, what's the remedy for that? Or is there a remedy for that? The remedy for it is we we got to uh, continue to emphasize that in practice, and, and we've done a good job of that. And the last couple of weeks of practice, we start out every practice with a competitive period versus our defense, and which that's exactly what we're trying to emphasize. And so uh, now the first period of last, uh, I say this: the first period of Tuesday's practice last week was not a uh, we did not start fast, and so we got to be consistent from that standpoint of practice. But that is something we do every practice to emphasize that and get better at it. And the emphasis this week is to come out. And I told those guys this last week, you know, we got confidence within ourselves where they know they can go down field and score. It was evident in the, uh, the end of the game against Houston. It was evident in last week's practice. I think I mentioned that to you all in a two-minute situation where we went down field and scored and, uh, and at the end of, uh, end of half at practice. And then we did it, you know, with five minutes to go right before halftime this past game where it's just a confidence that those guys is rated within that huddle. Like, they just knew they were going to go down and score the football. We could have had that same mentality when we start games. We could have had that same mentality when we're up and not just that mentality when we're down. You know, and I think that's the that's the one element we're missing, just that just that little notch, just get over, like almost like a, you know, a kill instinct, so to speak, that, you know, once we're up, have that same mentality as if we're down. But we do have to start fast, and that's the emphasis for us to do that in practice. Too conservative. You've had 14, 14 first possessions. Uh, I, uh, you know, seven games of third quarter, first quarter, out of the locker room, and nine times I think uh, CJ's gotten the ball on the first play. I mean, could it be that you might have to loosen things up a little bit to make some more room? Oh, no question, no question. And and guys like uh, and, and their receivers making plays downfield is giving us a chance to do that and and. Um, you know, you know, so no, it's no question about you. You're absolutely right, and, and we got receivers down that's making plays down the field, and and we got and we've done it last couple of weeks. We opened up the offense a lot more and and took shots. You know, and we got to continue to do that because those guys are making plays for us, and you know, it, guys like EJ Horton with his speed, and you know, keeping those guys out of the box. So absolutely. In terms of Garrett's decision making, mm -hmm. 
Where do you feel that is now from where it was the beginning of the season? How has that progressed? What's your evaluation? Yeah. A whole business? lot better. A whole lot better. Just the critical mistakes at the wrong times. You know, a lot, lot, lot better. He understands what he's seeing. He understands what he's doing. He's just got to, you know, sometimes uh, the way I put it, I mean, he – I always tell him, you know, he, he got players around him. He don't have to make all the plays. And, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, an incompletion or a ball, you know, thrown at the ground or out of bounds, it ain't always a bad play. You know, he feels like he can make all of them. And that's one of the fine lines as a coach where, you know, we want to take that kind of creative ability from a kid. But he has to understand with the maturity and experience he's had throughout his career that, you know, he can't make, you know, detrimental mistakes at certain times of the game. But his decision making has definitely gotten better. Just got to play smarter at times. How about his completion? How do you, I mean, is that go back to the layups or is that you throwing the ball down the field? Yeah, it is. Exactly right. It's the layups. And it's, again, like taking what the defense gives you. You know, every play, uh, you know, we've, hit, we've done a good job hitting some explosive plays in the past game uh, last couple of weeks. But it's got to be able to take, you know, to take what the defense gives you. Sometimes they give you a, you know, four or five yard game. Take that. Just move the chain. Just get yards. You know, but you're exactly right. It'll, it'll improve if he, he does that. And then as he continues, continues to do that, gives guys the opportunity to run out the catch, get yards out the contact, and, you know, defense start coming down. We'll run the ball, and we'll suck the safeties up into the box, and we'll get a one-on-one -on -one situation we've got a couple of times and hit the big ones downfield. But you're exactly right. He got to, you know, take what the defense gives him. Chad, the, uh, the interception and the, the third down the red zone seems like the two plays you all circled. That's probably easy to coach through, right? But the, the keep on the red zone, on the fourth down play, how do you teach that one? Because that, that happened so fast, and it looked like the middle was swallowed up. You didn't get great help on the outside blocking. That's well, that's a hard talking yeah. point, I would think. It is tough, but you got to, you know, like his, his read was clearly to hand that ball off. I, it is it's tough, and then you know you just got to you just got to you just got to think at that particular time. You know, fourth down, just you know, get a ball to the two hundred forty pound kid and let him get downhill, and you know, but um, it it is tough, but you know he got to. He saw it, his read, but his read told him to get the ball. He just got to get the ball, you know. And then uh, you mentioned before, and Neil mentioned it today, that Jaheim is um, still learning to practice a little bit. You can co coach guys how to play, right? Yeah. You get to and, coach guys how to practice, too. And this week, yeah, I'm, I'm like the coach energy. I'm on that kid every step of the way. He's going to do everything right this week. He's going to be where he's supposed to be. He's going to do what he's supposed to do. And he's going to press like he's supposed to practice. He's going to run fast like he's supposed to run fast. And so we go play him because he – he could do things with the ball in his hand, and we need it. So, I'm going to be on him every step of the way this week so we can get that done because he can make things happen with the ball in his hand. He can do stuff I can't coach, and I, we need that on the football field. Chad, yeah, we talked to Preston Fox a little while ago. So, give us your impression. Start with you when you first saw him. When did you sort of realize he had a chance to be a, more than just an, an average walk-on for you and could become a contributor? For me, man, uh, me personally, about four years, three, four years ago. I love that kid. Uh, he, he's always made phenomenal catches. You know, being in the position I am now, I've always been made sure, like fall for the guys that you know. I've always talked about it, man. There's talent equal your production. That kid's always producing, and he deserves to be on the football field. You know, and I'm glad he's playing the way he's playing. He's very resilient. Obviously, had some tough drops early in the season, and you know, he's done a phenomenal job keeping his chin up, being courageous, continuously uh, come back and. Work at his craft and keep getting better, keep fighting it, and and he shows the whole offense that you don't have to just necessarily be just special in your your build, just be special in the little things. I always tell the guy be magical in the little things and the great things that we all want and that we all expect to happen will happen. And he just does the littlest things right and puts himself in the position to make the plays he makes. And then when the number called, he makes those plays, and we love it, and we need him to continue to do it because it comes at crucial times for us and. And so he, he's, he's been a great force. I love him. With the way um, UCF plays offensively and the way they use the whole field and what they're capable of doing, does that influence you at all offensively and what you guys do? No, not really. You know, our emphasis every week, we got to, first of all, we always want to control the clock. Play smart ball. Goes back to, you know, uh, you know talking about with, with Gary. You know, sometimes we got some movement plays where we can get him out the pocket right now and uh, threaten the defense with his ability to be able to run and throw the ball, which also creates lanes for us. And he got to take what the defense gives him. You know, sometimes that's four or five yard pass, take that, right? And then uh, we've shown to be pretty efficient, you know, running the football, whether it's him running it or any one of the backs running it. And uh, we've, done, we've been pretty consistent controlling the clock. So for us, we just got to to allow us to play the way we continue playing, regardless of whatever they do offensively. We got to.
be efficient, run the football, play clean football, and take care of the football, which we did not do last week. You go into the game thinking, well, we've got to score points. We're going to have to score touchdowns mm -hmm. based on the way they're, they're capable of playing offensively, though, right? right? Absolutely, and we can. You know, the first couple of weeks, we didn't score as much as, uh, you know, uh, we wanted to score. Uh, last two weeks, you know, we've shown the ability to be able to get in the 30s and score. You know, we can do it. They can do it. And I told them yesterday, man, they just got to believe they can do it. They got the ability. Everybody that touches the ball on offense has the ability to go do something special with it. And they all got to believe that. And and I told them that yesterday. And then they got to have, again, they got to have that same belief they have whenever they're down that they know they're going to go down and score. We got to have that same belief when we start games to start fast. Got to have that same belief coming out of half to start half. So we got to have that same belief when we're up and we got opportunity to go score and take take over the game. We talked a few weeks ago after CJ kind of had a rough game. You talked about him needing to be better. How would you evaluate him in the last couple games in particular and just overall all season? Well, overall, not as good as he need to be all season, honestly. I mean, he's – but he's just got to – he got to keep plugging. I mean, he's, he's getting better. He's watching He's watching a lot more film and, you know, he's practicing better, you know, uh, He's resilient as well, and you know he's got to continue to get he's got to continue to get better, and you know he's he's running a lot more harder than he had uh, in the beginning. Not in the beginning, he's, he he has you know a couple of games he ran the ball hard. He's got to be consistent doing it, and he'll get back to being that person that he once was. Is it just a matter of just playing ball? He's getting to the point where maybe he's getting so much information, and so he's many got, things. He just, just got to go. Ball player. He's got to go play freely. He he's got to let it stop thinking, stop thinking, stop thinking, stop listening. Stop worrying and just go play freely. Like I, I was telling him, you know, last year uh, in his first game, I remember going to our first walkthrough. He said, Coach, I don't know when I'm going in the game, but all I know when I go in, I'm a ball. And I was telling him, you got to have the same mentality. You got to play like a freshman, you know, like a freshman mentality in the sense where you, you, didn't know, you didn't know what you didn't know. You didn't know that you have any expectations, no pressures, anything. You just going to go out there and play, play freely. You thought you was invincible. You could do anything and everything. You got to have that same mentality. The game hasn't changed. You got an older, you got more experienced people know who you are, but you got to have that same mentality and go play. So uh, he has ability and he got phenomenal talent. He just got to go play freely. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you all. Much.